Perfect. Hi, Gia. Hi. Oh, wait, let me put my coffee out of the frame. <laughs> um, I'm a coffee addict. I love coffee. I don't. Do you like coffee? You know what? I love coffee, but I'm more of a Red Bull gal these yeah. days. Yeah. I mean, I'm a different generation. You know, when I when I was your age, coffee was the only energy drink available. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. You know, the guy who invented Red Bull, his name is Dieter or Dietmar Matsuschek. He became the richest man in Austria. I bet he did. His drink is yeah. very popular. It's extremely <laughs> popular, yeah. Especially he, with the way we do it here. We put it in a little bit of alcohol, too. You know, very dual purpose out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, uh, so we are shooting for Pure Taboo today. Yes. Uh, director is my good buddy Craven Moorhead. Love him. I know him for so many years. You were probably a baby when we met. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 29. 29. So, and you were in grammar school, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so when did you start doing porn? I started doing porn in November 2014. So when that's. I was 24 years old. That's almost five years now. Almost. I'm like coming up on it. Yeah. And I'm about to hit 25 years. Oh my God. That's so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait until I'm there. <laughs> so, what do you think was your best experience of your whole porn career so far? I mean, what, what in general, what, how did it change your life in a good way or? My best experience probably so far was being able to write my own script for a movie that I starred in. And it was a life experience that I guess a lot of people could relate to. Uh, manipulation and families and family friends and family values, things like that, that kind of change the way you think about things you were brought up to think. But um, being able to write that and work with Brie and Craven and everybody and seeing my own work come to life, that was probably the most, one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done in this business. And so many people liked it and related to it. It really was a turning point for me. That made me want to start creating my own content and launch my own sites and now I work on that more than I'm on set. And it's like really amazing. Wow, I, yeah. I didn't know. I'm impressed. I, I have you. to watch that. <laughs> Thank I you. I have to I'll watch do. that. Yeah. Uh, where can people find that? Let's mention that. Uh, so I'm going to show you Twitter. That's Gia Page, at Gia Page. At Gia Page uh, on Twitter. And then where can they find the other stuff? You can find that movie on Pure Taboo. It's called Is Everything Okay? also uh, starring Seth Gamble. Seth Gamble, yeah. I just, wow, that was so weird. I wanted to call him Seth Rogen so bad just now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got Seth Gamble in it. Reagan Fox is in it. She plays a good family friend of ours. It's a really good script. Good. It's really fun to work on. Wow, I'm impressed. Um, what was your worst experience in porn? My worst experience in porn was my very first porn shoot that I ever showed up to. Um, I have to kind of mention that how I got into porn isn't really a conventional way to get into porn. I really didn't do much research on the industry, nor did I do research on the people who I was going to do business with to get me porn jobs. So I had kind of a you know, shady, not reputable agent, and the first porn shoot that he sent me to was for a very extreme site and you know he told me he's like well I don't want you to watch it because it looks a lot worse than it actually is and if you watch it then you're not going to want to go and I'm like you know I've quit my job and I went to New York to do this sketchy porn I don't want to call my family and be like well I fucked up so I said okay this is what I'm doing and I went to that set and it was one of the worst sets I've ever been on they um, I don't really know if I should say the site name because I don't know if that's like... Yeah, whatever. You, 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 it was for free. facial abuse. Yeah. Okay. So like I really didn't know what I was getting myself into and that's what I thought porn was. After that shoot, I was like, oh no, I've fucked up so bad. 
Like I, but this is what I'm doing. I'm here and I need to make my money at least to be able to get back home, to restart my life back home. So those were the shoots that I did for like the first little bit of my career. And then I went out to Florida and like shot actual porn. And I was like, oh wow, I actually really love this. And it's not terrible. And I can oh, yeah. see myself doing this for a really long time. But yeah, I, I want to blame uh, your agent for this because I work a lot for facial abuse and I know this side is very controversial and it's definitely not for everybody right but all the scenes I've done and I, I shoot my YouTube ch uh, videos on, on all of them and we all had a good time but the girls were into it I, I, I shot with uh, London River for instance and other girls you might know and yeah, a lot of girls are super and, into it. And that's totally their thing. I also produced and directed for many years for Kink. And I always insisted to the agencies, I said, show your girls our website. I give you free access. Tell them that's what we're going to do. Don't tell them it's, 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 oh, it's not that, it just looks hard. It's, no, it is going to be hard if they like it. And then some girls say, oh, I, I do it for extra money. I said, listen. Yeah. If you do it for extra money, that means you don't really like it. Then you and shouldn't, then you shouldn't do, do it. it at all. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I don't want you to suffer for an extra hundred or two hundred dollar. Uh, I said, if you're not into it, don't do it. Right. Um, and that is really what it was because if I would have watched the footage and if I would have seen that, and you know, then I would have known that's what I was getting myself into. I wouldn't have agreed to do it. You know. But I think there's like so. I guess, I mean, that's a shady agent, though. You know, they're going to send you to do what they want you to do. But, right. you know, I got other agents outside of him. I always knew, you know, where I was going, who I was shooting with. That first couple of months in porn, I don't really... I don't really look at that as like a genuine shot at porn because that's not what it's been like at all for the rest of my career. You know, yeah. I've been treated with so much respect and it's not even on, you know, the set. That's not their fault. That's the type of content they shoot. I just personally, that was me and I didn't know and I didn't and like it. And yeah. I didn't know that, well, that's a lie. I did call my agent halfway through and I said, I don't want to be doing this, you know, and yeah. he said, if you don't finish, you don't get paid. And then I'm like, if I don't finish, I don't get paid. I've already done, you know, a half an hour's worth of this stuff. I have to finish. I can't go home with no money. Yeah. Like, And that, at that point, was on me. That was my decision that I made for myself. Nobody forced me to be there on set. You know, nobody, while I was shooting, like, treated me awfully. They, it is acting. They do yeah. act out those things. They make it seem very extreme. But... For me, I mean, knowing is, what I was it, getting myself into, it was extreme to me. It you know? is extreme. I yeah. totally agree. And as I said, I mean, I, I work for them as a performer a lot. And uh, I, if I would see that a, a girl shouldn't be here, yeah. uh, then I would say, listen, guys, I don't want... I'm, I'm not a rapist, you know. If, uh, right. Uh, but... Uh, is what we shoot uh, we shoot for facial abuse also here in LA uh, and the girls totally know what, what they come for yeah. and we have a great time yeah um, and if I walked onto a set if with that mindset knowing what I was going to do I'm sure I would have a great time yeah. I think I really would um, now especially like I've learned a lot about myself in porn. There are things in the beginning of my porn career that I would have said, oh, I'll never do that, or no, that doesn't interest me, or I don't find that attractive, or that doesn't turn me on. I'm a completely different person now. Yeah. I've learned so much about myself sexually and just mentally even that there are shoots that I would take now that I don't think I would have ever dreamed of seeing myself in, yeah. you know? But I think that's, you grow and you learn a lot about yourself. What I did when I produced and direct for Kink, and I never promised girls extra money for, for this kind of shoots because, as I said, if you don't like it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. But then, I, many times I gave them bonuses. I gave, gave them 100 or 200 dollar extra because they did something extraordinary. Yeah. And, but that was a, a, a nice surprise afterwards for them. Right. They didn't expect, they didn't say, okay, I'm going to suffer for, through this because I want to make this extra 100 dollar. And that's yeah. important. Yeah. You know, the happiness. 
us. I think that's a good mindset to have too, especially being a director. You don't want, you know, you don't want people to be upset with their work. You want, you, know, you want everybody to go home happy. And also, it's it's not only because I like to be a nice person, even though today I play a horrible person again. We're going to talk about that <laughs> in a second. Uh, uh, but it's also uh, business-wise, because uh, we were shooting uh, most of that uh, uh, product in Spain. Spain is not organized like here. They don't have all these agencies and stuff. And I was depending that girls Uh, I get uh, models uh, from recommendations, mm -hmm. so some and we had a lot of trouble to find girls at the beginning because I told them look at the website, and they said oh no no I can't do that. And then other girls came from our shoot and said hey that was great we had so much fun it's a good team. All of a sudden the girls came from everywhere hey I want to work for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well your reputation has a lot to do yeah. with it too you know. If you have good rapport with people and they've had fun on your sets, and even if it might, you know, look a little bit scary, it's really not when you're in there doing it. And people are so, we're so good at acting, you know, we can make something so innocent look so evil if yeah. we wanted to. Yeah, to do, we're gonna do another. I mean, it's pure taboo. It's it's a weird set. Like uh, we have a weird director, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which I love. Yeah, <laughs> I love Craven. And uh, I'm playing a priest again. I've played a priest, minister, cardinal, even even um, a rabbi before. I think I was the only rabbi which is not circumcised. <laughs> so, uh, is that some fantasy of you? This whole religion play, or uh, is it just acting? I think, you know, actually I think there is a little bit of interest there just because church wasn't for me what it is for a lot of people. My family wasn't like super, super involved in the church, but we were. My parents kind of used church as a tool of like punishment. Like, oh, if you were bad, we have to go to church. Oh, if, you know, well, it's Christmas, we have to go to church and you better, you know, sing with the choir and you bet. And if you don't, then you're going to be in trouble. So I think it's like, because it was such a pain in my ass as a kid, it does kind of interest me a little bit. Yeah. Maybe even sexually as an adult. <laughs> yeah, my my, my uh, memories go back to me as a teenager and uh, we, we were a boys school uh, and uh, then there were uh, one one Catholic girls school and I loved the girls from the Catholic court they were the naughtiest <laughs> so and they were like <laughs> they typically are right yeah. <laughs> people think if you send you know a girl away to like private school with a bunch of other girls that there's no trouble that you can get into but oh man <laughs> are they wrong because those Sunday schools were where you got in the most trouble <laughs> <laughs> so okay I would love to talk forever to you uh, but we have to rehearse our dialogue uh, yes. they are building the set uh, and uh, I would uh, Enjoy if you have a little time after the scene, we can talk about our experience of, of our shoot. I would love that. Okay, okay. Gia, thank you very much. And thank I you. talk to you later, and I'm looking forward to have sex with you in between these two interviews. Can't wait. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. You look so perfect again. You looked a little different just a few minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a little bit of something on my face. I'm not, I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> <laughs> We were shooting a crazy scene today. I mean, it was really twisted and with a lot of dialogue. So, yeah, yeah there was quite a bit in there. Yeah. You know? But I think it was like the way we had to do it made it harder because you had to be so menacing and still come off kind of. Believable. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and also not come on. I mean, you are such a great actress. I mean, she was crying in the scene. The tears were flowing. It was like fucking Hollywood. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with all sisters, so you know, whoever's the most believable. <laughs> I swear that taught me. 
Uh, I, you told us a nice story before. I don't know if you wanted to say it here on, on YouTube about the dishwasher. <laughs> oh, yeah. When I was growing up, um, I grew up with all sisters. So, you know, we were, I guess, the little house cleaners. Every Christmas we used to beg my mom to buy a dishwasher because, you know, in a family of six people, there's a lot of dishes to do all of the time. And that usually fell on us. We would beg her, mom, please, please buy a dishwasher. And she would always just, well, why would I do that? I have three perfectly good dishwashers right here. Referring <laughs> to me and my sisters, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, we mentioned before we were shooting for Pure Taboo for Craven. Uh, uh, did you ever uh, did you think about his stage name? I think it's the most clever stage name. I, you know what, it is really clever. Craven Moorhead. It's yeah. <laughs> A lot of people call him just and never think about what it means, you know. And you really have to stop and think about it for Craven Moorhead. And if you don't say it together, you really don't get it. You could miss it. <laughs> like this, there used to be a pornographer back in the days in, in England. He was very popular. His, um, his stage name was Ben Dover. <laughs> I like that one. Ben Dover. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That was also a very clever name. Um, yeah, he was popular before I was in porn. I was his fan, and then later I met him once in London, and we had a fun time shooting. He was behind the camera, not in, anymore in front. But oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, you are five years in the business, which is longer than the average. Yes. And I love that. Uh, I think women has have a great potential but only very few like Kylie Island Kylie Island was like 20 years or so in the in the business or longer most girls come and go yeah uh, what is your do you have any plans what how long you want to do that business um honestly I've always said I'll shoot for as long as people keep requesting me I love this job I think the fact that I have separation between porn and home though because I don't live out in LA I live back home in Michigan and I fly out for shoot so it's like every time I fly out for a shoot I get so excited it's like mm. going to my first set all over again I think I think that's really the secret to it is go home separate yourself be a normal person come back to porn refreshed every single time so it's like I've never not been excited for a scene I've mm. never like walked into a scene and been like fuck I would rather be at home this is exciting to me still I think and I, I tell you what I, I do this now about 25 years so five times the time and I, I still feel the same yeah I still feel like I, I arrived here on set uh, we know each other from before sometimes it's a brand new face you have no ID so today I knew it's gonna be good sometimes it's exciting because you don't know <laughs> you know but this time it was exciting because I knew that it was gonna be a good day like yeah. I knew obviously and then looking at the script and seeing you know because we've played roles before where you were kind of a manipulator to me so yeah. it was almost familiar to fall back into this role I it mean so good. they usually hire me as the creepy uh... so good at it but I would love to see you in something like very romantic because you're you're very sensual and I think that is a mark that a lot of male performers miss like you can come to set and you can fuck sure sure but you are very sensual whether you mean to be or not with you know the kissing on the neck the breathing in the I ear just enjoy. that's like I can't tell you how amazing that is for me because I don't get that all the time like you are one of a kind so it is I, I, absolutely a treat <laughs> I definitely enjoy shooting with you you know it's for me hard to say working a lot of people say oh I want to work with you you know for me work sounds Okay, we, we do it for a living and we get paid for it, but it still doesn't feel like work for me. No, it doesn't. Yeah. I haven't been to work in five years. <laughs> 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 okay, I thank you very much. Uh, I enjoyed talking to you. I enjoyed having sex with you. Very much. <laughs> And I enormously enjoyed watching you act today. You are so good at it. Thank you. <laughs> That really means a lot to me coming from you. Truly. No, but it is true. Thank you. So thank you for the kiss to me. Maybe you blow a kiss to the YouTubers, to the people out in the world. Thank you for having me, YouTube.
And I hope to see you soon. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys. Bye guys.